Welcome to another episode of The Buzz Around Bees. So today we're on the road again as we have been all season and we're going to bring you to a different person's yard and we're going to do a simple hive inspection today. After the hive inspection, which by the way we're going to um, put in a queen excluder which is a little bit different, you haven't seen us do that yet, um, we're going to give you a kind of a tour of the yard and show you some pollinators and show you some flowers. It's a, it's a little bit twist on what we've been doing, but we want to do some different things to show you the full scope of what it's like to be a beekeeper. So today we're going to be joined by Mr. Bill Vesey, who's a good friend and fellow beekeeper. Bill, hey. welcome. How are you? Hey, how are you? So Bill is going to show us um, the yard, and he's going to show us a lot of really interesting flowers and pollinators that we have here. And tell us about what we're going to do with the, with the uh, hive inspection. Uh, well, this particular hive, just barely survived the winter. I, in fact, I didn't think it was going to. It was very weak this spring. And fortunately, I was able to save it. And, and right the last time I was in looking at it, it uh, I had put a honey super on it. And I noticed now that the honey super also has uh, you know, it's a, lot of brood. a lot of brood, capped uh, brood. So what I'm going to do is the second honey super I put on, I'm going to put a queen extractor on it also, a queen excluder. excluder which is going to keep the queen from going up and laying eggs in this particular hive. Just uh, it's something different. A lot of times they don't use the excluder, but... Uh, you know, again, it's the same thing. If you ask um, three beekeepers the same question, you'll get five different answers. Some people say you should put in queen excluders. Some people say you don't put in queen excluders. I know people that do both. Um, so we'll do it today and, yeah. and see what happens. So now we're going to, um, we're going to don our suits and, and do a hive inspection. Yeah. So here we are at the hive, and what's going to happen is Bill is going to do a hive inspection um, and add a queen excluder, but he is going to explain to us the steps that he's taking as we do it. Bill? All right. Okay, I'm going to take the, t the top cover off. Tell us the top cover off. Okay. Here's the inner cover. Let me give it a little swing. So he's going to take off the inner cover, which has a little hole in it, yep. provides the bees an opportunity to have a, another exit to get out of the hive. This is, this is the second honey super that I had added. The first honey super that I had put on, I did not put a queen excluder on, which I, which I usually don't do. Uh, but because of uh, this year, like I said, this hive just barely survived the winter, and now it's got a real great brood going on involved. So what happened is it did bring brewed up into the first honey super right here. And I'm going to show that to you, but I am going to put a queen excluder on this one. But for now, I'll show you what's going on right in here. There shouldn't be anything in this yet. All right, see there nothing. They're just starting to pull out here. But, uh, but if you look, I'm going to hold this one. So he took this first frame out to give him the ability to move some of the other ones around to make it a little bit easier. So this one has got... See, now we're just starting to get... This, see, this is all honey and some of it's even being capped. They generally start in the middle and then work their way out. Yeah, that's what they've done. Yeah. We never talk about bee space. Uh, we're going to have to talk about that oh. in one of the issues this year, one of the segments this year about the space between the frames, uh, the space between the end of the frame. I think we discussed it last year, but we should talk about it again this year at some point. All right, here's the, 
You can, if you notice, Richard, you can even like if you lift this, it's still got some good, good weight of honey in here. There's a there's a lot of um, honey in this. Let, let me see if I can let me work on this side. Never mind. We'll just uh No, we'll we'll get this guy open. Alright. <clears throat> Go into the corner yep. right there. This one's kind of a... Uh, yeah. This one is stuck in there pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You have, do you have another tool? There, there we, we go. go. There we go. Oh, feel that weight, Richard. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's got to probably weigh 50, 60, 70 pounds. Yeah. All right. Now, let's, have, let's open it up. Yeah, let's open it up and show some of the frames and the reason why it weighs so much. And this is just what happened in the last few days. It just got this. If you notice in the yard, I have different nectar sources all season long. I have different plants that provide nectar. Yeah, that's the tenth frame out. <laughs> that's uh, that's unbelievable. And let's turn it around and see what the other side looks like. It's just... like... Yeah, you want to hold that one for a minute? Mm -hmm. If you notice, they're pretty mild, these bees. What the brood's going? <laughs> Might be. Uh... Yeah, there's brood in this frame. Is there? Yep. Yeah. So that's. That's why. Yeah. No, that's all honey. That's. I uh, turn honey. it on the other side. Oh, okay. Oh, there's brood. There's brood. See. That's, that's all. All that's left, though. It was a lot, much more. Did they hatched? I noticed the other day they were doing test pattern runs. So. Oop. Go down. Yep. We can just pull it this way. Which way to go? Straight down. Okay, so we have the capped brood. We have the brood. So we know the queen has been here. Yeah, that's why I want to be careful about to hurt her. That went all the way down. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get out of this hive for a minute. Mm -hmm. And... We'll I'm going to put the queen extractor on right put, now. Put the queen extractor back on. Uh, put the queen extractor on. Uh, yeah. so Which I probably brood. don't have to do. But I'm going to anyways. Just to. So what this does is this prevents the queen. These are, these are too small for the queen to get up through. So it mm -hmm. makes sure that the, the boxes, the, the supers on top of it only have honey and not, not the uh, brood in there. Okay, make sure you got your vent. So I would put this back together. So there was no sense looking for the queen as we know it's there. Yeah. We know it's been there because there's plenty of brood. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a walk around the yard and uh, we're going to show you some pollinators.
So in the last year and a half, we've talked about the bees um, and what the bees do for us and how important they are to our society and talking about the food that they pollinate for us, which is well over 50%. We haven't really talked about what we need to do to feed the bees. So today we're going to give you a little tour of different plants, flowers, trees that are important for the bees' well-beings. The other thing that we should talk about is a water source. Bees need a water source, whether it be a bird bath or a pond. And certainly if your neighbor has a swimming pool, you want to have a good water source because bees tend to go to swimming pools. So Bill, give us a little um, explanation of some of the things that you have out here. All right, through the years I've tried to build up and uh, have different plants uh, for all the, you know, the different pollinators, butterflies, hummingbirds, the wild bees, and especially the honeybees. And I want them to bloom at different times of the season. Right here we just have a common day lily. It's probably at the end of its cycle from blooming. Right after that, a lot of we have all kinds of different hostas. Some of them are actually even fragrant and have different colored flowers and some of them are downright nice looking. You know what's funny is that's a hosta and that's a hosta. Yeah. And the, the different size mm -hmm. and the different flowers um, yeah. and the bees do love them. Well, the hostas are very simple at, to grow. That one over, this one over here, look at that difference there. That's a nice flower and hosta. That's a hosta as well, yeah. yeah. Then later on in the season, we have an anemone, which it's a real large ones on the other side of the yard. They'll bloom in the fall. And then we have the lanium, which has been blooming all summer long. Earlier this spring, the bishop cap was blooming. And these are things that you've been growing for years. You've yes, been nurturing yeah. these. Mm -hmm. This didn't happen overnight. This no. has happened over decades. Right. Then we have, here's a Montauk daisy, which is a fall daisy. Up back here is the money plant that I actually just from compost I threw the seeds in and they'll bloom again later. Uh, this is a what do you call a, it's a it's a type of dogwood. It's a it's an Alba extravaganza. It's not really a, much of a flower. It's more for its variegated squash plants that were uh, that seeded themselves. We have here the. Um, this time of year, what the heck they call it? The, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> it looks but like anyway. a hibiscus. You know, they, the tree comes. In. I can't think of it. Uh, out back here, we have blackberries. If you can notice, there's the flower in that. I was picking blackberries earlier. We even have a pussy willow. This is a pink pussy willow, which in the spring the bees will go on. And these are all things that the bees are attracted to mm -hmm. and the bees eat and they need to survive. We have peony right here. Butterfly, butterfly bush. Variegated, uh, it's called grass, that this particular grass will get a plume in the fall and bees will also take the pollen off of the, tr off the grass. You look right behind you, watch out. There's a blackberry right there. This is an, uh, an enterprise apple tree. It's not very tall, but it's loaded because of the bees cross-pollinating with a crab apple. And we, get, we get quite a crop every year from this. So one of the things that I want to talk about is clover in your yard. People like, don't like clover and they try to kill clover, but as you can see, the bees love clover. And there's a, there's a honeybee right there on that, on that clover right now, Bill's finger. And if you look around the yard, um, he really has a beautiful lawn, but it has a lot of clover in it, which is very, very important. You know, everybody tries to have the most beautiful green lawn in the world, which is fine, but it's not really that good for the bees. Here, as you can see, there are there are plenty of honeybees all over the place um, living off of the, the clover. So then we're going to move over to the cone flower. We have a purple cone flower. And Bill, so you can see the bees are on, on that as well. There's a, there's a bee right there, a couple of them. So even wild bees here.
Okay, Bill, why don't you All explain right. what else we have here? All right, we'll move down. We the, that was a pink cornflower, the calendar. Here's a white cornflower. Okay. This is a, a, a bee bomb. This is a wild bee bomb. If you look out back, there's a clematis that just finished blooming. The bees were on that earlier this year. There was also uh, columbine behind it. It's gone by. Dwarf maple, maple tree. This is the herb garden. Right here, this was uh, earlier this year. This is the chives. They love the, the purple chive flowers. It's, right here is a, this is a borage. And you can see that there's honey bees right, right there right, right now. They love the borage. Here, you, you can eat that. Thank you. Right. It's, here it's basil. The flowers on the basil will come later and they'll be on that. Up back was sage. Earlier this year, they were the flowers on the sage. Here's thyme. Once again, they love the thyme. We have salvia, hummingbirds, and the bees like that. This here is dragon head. The bees like that. It's a bomb. We got right in here, we got lavender. Oh, it's, it's and great. there's bees on top of there's, there's bees, bees all, all over the place now. Once there's salvia in there. Okay, there's more bee bomb, more salvia. Bee bomb comes in all different. See that now? If you know it, I just want to point this out to someone. See that black swallowtail butterfly there? That's going to lay its eggs on this plant tree. That's its host plant that it lays its eggs on. All right, Bill, so explain what we have over here. All right, right here we have a, a blue-eyed daisy that I started from seed in the house. All right. Here we have a passion flower that the bees love. Oh, yeah, and I have, a I have two different perennial types out back. Here is a, a lemon balm. And here is a, a key lime. And the bees have actually pollinated and, caught, and made little limes are coming. So what I'd like to do is take this opportunity to thank you for, for one, doing the hive inspection, uh, which is pretty interesting, and just to see the amount of honey that's in there mm -hmm. at this time of the year. Yeah. Um, and we had a little explanation of the queen excluder, but I hope that this little bit of different um, showing of the plants and the flowers and the trees help people understand what we need to do to feed the bees as well. I mean, simple things as clover. Um, it's very important for the bees and what we really need to make sure is that the bees survive um, because without the bees we're all in big trouble. So again I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you Bill yep. and uh, thank the viewers for uh, watching another episode of the Buzz Around Bees. We'll see you next episode.